Thank you, Mr. President, for the opportunity to help organize this debate and now speak in a debate that means so much to me as someone with Iranian heritage. My argument will lay out three points. Firstly, why we need reform in Iran. Secondly, why revolution right now is not feasible. And finally, why reform is possible. In February of 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini staged a violent and bloody revolution that overthrew the Shah. After 44 years of repression and bloodshed, Iranian people are calling for change. But firstly, it falls upon me to introduce the speakers from the opposition. Tonight you will hear from Mr. John Limbert, a seasoned and senior diplomat from across the pond. He was held captive in the Iran hostage crisis for more than a year. Fortunately for him, the Oxford Union will only hold him hostage for one night. <laughs> then you will hear from Professor Ali Ansari, an expert of modern history at St. Andrews, with degrees from University College London, King's College London, SOAS, and many other accolades. But not to be confused with Ali Ansari, the much more prolific Pakistani actor and rapper. Uh, and you will also hear from Rana Rahimpur, who, um, well, we don't have a student speaker on the other side of the debate, but who looks young enough that she might as well be one. So first I'll frame the debate. Obviously, we all want to abolish the Islamic Republic of Iran. My dearest hope is that it is one day abolished, but right now, this isn't feasible. Not only do I think it must reform, I believe that it can reform, and I intend to set out how. Also, to prove the proposition that the Islamic Republic of Iran can reform, we only have to show the possibility of any amount of reform, the possibility of any amount of positive change, and that we ought to believe in this. Revolution is the only alternative to change, and revolution is a forcible, drastic overthrow of government. The motion asks whether the government of Iran can reform. This does not need to be achieved tomorrow or next year. It simply asks whether reform is possible. If we can envision reform over the next generation, then we should side with the proposition. So firstly, why we need change in Iran. Since the murder in custody of 22-year-old Iranian woman, Maza Amini, the brave men and women of Iran have been taking to the streets calling for an end to the dictatorial regime. The so-called Islamic Republic's violations of human rights is well documented and has been happening since the founding of the regime in 1979, treating women, Sunni Muslims, and many other marginalized minorities as second-class citizens. We cannot make things better for our brothers and sisters in Iran unless there's a fundamental restructuring of government. The protests sparked by Maza Amini and continued by the brave men and women in Iran today are unprecedented. They're the largest uprisings in Iran in over four decades of protests since the revolution. They've been female-led and youth-led, and the movement's slogan, Woman, Life, Freedom, fights against a system and regime that is repressive, murders its citizens, and is anti-women's rights. So now I ask, what is the alternative to reform? If we cannot reform, as the opposition will argue tonight, if we cannot reform the government through politically established legal ways, then the only alternative to achieving change is through physical military revolution. It's indescribably hard to abolish the Islamic Republic of Iran, as our brothers and sisters in Iran right now have felt. The only way to do so would be via Western intervention. And I'll explain why. In the modern era, with advanced technological warfare and tools like chemical weaponry available, it's widely accepted that citizens on their own cannot successfully revolt without active collaboration from some part of the state. The regime of the clerics in Iran has dissolved much of Iran's traditional armed forces, replacing them with their hired lackeys, the IRGC. And for example, the regime dissolved the Imperial Air Force, a shining example of Iran's technological innovation and heroism. As a result, we can no longer rely on the armed forces or any cooperation from any part of the state to have the ability to step in and help the citizens revolt against the government in Iran, as we might have hoped. A successful revolution therefore demands foreign intervention. The physical geography of Iran exacerbates the difficulty of military intervention, but more importantly, why we wouldn't support this is because we've seen over the last two decades 
that foreign powers deposing a government by military force doesn't work. Western intervention in Iran and Afghanistan, Iraq, sorry, and Afghanistan and Syria and Libya simply has not worked. To support Western intervention in Iran is to say that we've learned nothing from the myriad of interventions over the last 20 years of global politics. Finally, I'd like to make the case that reform is possible. We've seen it happen before as recent as 2016 with the US-Iran nuclear deal, a clear example of reform. It's clearly possible for this deal to be reinstated in the future. It may not be likely, it, we may not be certain it will happen, but it is possible. And that means that it's possible for reform to occur. We cannot deny that the Islamic Republic of Iran can reform. The opposition may make the case that the regime actors are purely self-interested and have no interest whatsoever in reform, but purely have interest in keeping power for themselves. Yet this doesn't mean that they'll never reform. The brave protests over the past year in Iran are unprecedented and are the largest uprisings Iran's seen since 1979. When combined with sanctions from the West and international solidarity, it is because the regime are interested in keeping power rather than in spite of it that we can force them to change, that we can force a restructuring of government. When faced with both internal and external pressures, reform is possible. Remember that Iran was the first country to have a declaration of human rights with Cyrus the Great, who wrote the Cyrus Cylinder in 550 BC. Human rights are at the heart of Persian values, and we can return to this. I would finally like to say that to say the government of Iran can reform is to say that we have hope in the social movement that we're all supporting right now in Iran. I have belief in the strength and fortitude of the Iranian people to bring about positive change, and I believe that these protests aren't in vain. This is a vote for hope and a vote for change. If you feel the same, please vote with me for the side proposition. I'd like to end with the old Persian adage, here for reform. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. Thank you.